down and hurt his economy if he can. But as you can see, He-Man is actually doing quite a good job with his army. He has two sorceresses, two priests, three men, maybe with defend, but I'm not too sure. I hope they've got defend. Yes, they do have defend, so defend is great versus an all dried army. So abolish magic being used to get rid of elementals. That just gives free experience to the demon hunter and keeper of the grove. So He-Man's goal here is just to hang around his expansion at this point. Obviously, he needs to be aware of uh, Mad Frog's kind of plans. But if he was if he man knew that Madfog had no expansion, he would not be worried at all about leaving his base. He'd be quite happy to stay around his economy for a while until he built up a decent sized army. But as you see, at the moment it's kind of 50-50 as to who has a better army. Uh, I would say that Madfog possibly has a slightly superior army. And I think we're going to see that put to good use here. He has now got a Druid of the Claw in his army. And I think he will be training the Druid of the Claw upgrade. Yep, level 1 has just arrived. And that will allow him to get Rejuvenation on his Demon Hunter or Keeper of the Grove. So I think we're going to see Rejuvenation on the Keeper of the Grove here. Nice Rejuvenation on the Keeper of the Grove which was being targeted. So a lot of attack rounds wasted there for... He-Man's army, and that's kind of going to be decisive in this battle. Now the Demon Hunter is being targeted. Demon Hunter being solely focus fired on. Demon Hunter using a healing scroll there, and now retreating at a very good time. And you've got to say that Mad Fog definitely came out ahead in that that battle. Good entangle there from the Keeper of the Grove, picking off retreating units. Forces are under attack. And now rather than chasing into the human base, it would be very worthwhile for Mad Frog to at that exact point to have gone to the shop rather than screw around here. The problem with those farms is that the farms allow He Man to see exactly where the Night Elf player is at all times. So still no expansion from Mad Frog. He is 54 food out of 60. Now he lets that farm survive at 25 health, it would have been pretty worthwhile just getting rid of that for a few more hits, strange. And as you can see he has peeled two drives off his army to go and harass the human expansion. Uh, so he mentioned maybe think about in future games is maybe getting a lumber mill and just getting one tower up, of, up at his expansion and even possibly his main. Just to stop this harassment, this harassment from the rogue dryas it's extremely difficult to deal with for a human player and the investment in one guard tower is extremely worthwhile. Myself as a night elf player when I see a guard tower it kind of pisses me off because basically it closes a whole avenue of play off to the night elf player. The night elf player being un unable to harass the human economy at all. So night elf player here, Mad Fog trying to harass the main but I would kind of consolidate at this point and I would realise I've got a slight advantage here and just try and creep the shop creeps. Yeah I wonder if we'll see this happen now. But I guess he wants to take care of He-Man's economy but obviously the human player can defend it very very quickly. So you can see the power defend there, defend making that footman kind of seem invulnerable for like 20 seconds you know 10 drives hitting it and doing nothing to it so are we going to see the night elf player mad frog take the shop creeps kind of strange to be running home i mean his heroes are pretty healthy it would be pretty safe to take on the shop creeps because he does have a Portal on his keeper of the grove, so if he came under pressure at the shops, he would be able to portal away instantly. So, um, hmm. both players playing it very, very cagey here. This is a best of three match in the early rounds of the SWC qualifier. So, basically, He Man has to win this game, or he goes into the losers bracket. And obviously, Mad Frog wants to win this game to win the best of three series two 0 so 
here, man, taking on these creeps, trying to find that super item that will give him the edge in the next big battle. Let's see what item he got. He got a stone token. Well, you got to say that's a good item. Portal at this point. Now, let's... Looks to be an okay portal. Unfortunately, the Mount King is level 1. It's not a great item. He has to use his Rock Golem. And Mad Frog portals. So, as a Knight of Player, a Knight of Player has to be thinking at this point that to deal with these footmen and defend them all, because he's got an old Riot army, it's kind of. He's obviously putting all his income into. I mean, his skill points into immolation and evasion, as well as thorns for the Keeper of the Grove. That's what I allow him to deal with, like. The footman army because the dryers certainly do not do that. And again, more harassment from Mad Frog. I would a hundred percent definitely take on those shop creeps now, because I would know fine well that the human player would have to run a mile to get any creeps. So Mad Frog ignoring the tower. Killing He-Man's economy. He-Man is now going to come to the expansion. I'd be kind of worried at this point because uh, the Knight of Player, Mad Falk, has no portals. So, I mean, if a hero did get trapped badly, then he could be in a little bit of trouble. As you can see, the Rock Golem targeting the Keeper of the Grove is being targeted. Rejuvenation casting on the Keeper of the Grove. Slowed, slow on the Keeper of the Grove. Can I dry cast? Abolish magic on the Keeper of the Grove, yes it can, but unfortunately a bolt Keeper of the Grove targeted, but all that targeting means a lot of attack rounds were lost. But it's okay, I would say He-Man has a definite advantage. And they're desperately trying to get this Demon Hunter. Casting slow on the Demon Hunter, abolish magic being manually cast on the Demon Hunter and again slow cast on the Demon Hunter. And again, abolish magic having to be casting a demon hunter. So, a and a nice bolt there. So close, just to getting it. Slow being cast, abolish magic being cast. Desperately trying to get that level five demon hunter. Now the mountain king has been targeted. Mountain king, invisible cast on the mountain king. Good recovery there from He Man. Now as you can see, He-Man only has one footman in his army, so it's imperative for He-Man to start adding footmen back into that army. Uh, as you can see, if you look at his men, he's not rebuilding those footmen, so he needs those footmen to counter uh, the Dryad piercing damage. Uh, so that's what I would be doing at this point, is getting more footmen. Maybe he is worried about the fact that the Demon Hunter may have level 3 immolation, so footmen are worthless. But no, he is rebuilding footmen, that's exactly what I would do. As you can see, the human player is going to try and take these creeps, going to try and steal these creeps, and the Mountain King, which is invisible, can see exactly where the Knight of Player is at this point. And we're seeing Inner Fire. Oh, the human player now has Inner Fire. Inner Fire is huge for a human player. Absolutely huge. This gives a player's force plus 5 armour. So he's taking on these creeps. Mad Frog being slow to react, he is kind of ignoring. Mad Frog knows that he's only just got an expansion that this next battle might be critical. Mountain King Invisible, well aware of the Knight of Player just standing outside, well aware of the incoming attack, and we're going.